Good morning. It's, uh, good to see you all here today. Um, Michael hopefully is on his way, otherwise this will be quite a short service. <laughs> but I don't not see any visitors, so um, if some come in that would be great. There are no specific prayer requests, but uh, keep Karen in your prayers and Robert and Daniel by extension. Um, but yeah, I'm presiding in place of Robert and Mike has volunteered to song lead for us, so it's appreciated. I'll also be taking the reading today, uh, which is found in Romans chapter 1. It'll be the first 17 verses. <clears throat> Emmanuel has the Lord's table and Michael will be preaching and that's them just arriving, so yeah. good to go this morning. Um, we'll also have refreshments afterwards and they have been provided by Colin and Helen, so we're grateful to them for that today. Um, please switch off all your uh, mobile devices or any other electronics you might have, um, or if you're going to use them, like I am, keep them on silent as uh, they can be quite noisy if we uh, don't turn off the sound. Uh, there is a, a cry room at the back, specifically for babies who are upset and need a wee bit of consoling, or if they're needing fed, and that's either a private space for you to, to feed in a certain way, or if you want to, to feed your child in a noisy eater. Um, quite often you can hear them go, nom, 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 nom. It's, it can be quite distracting. Um, that's kind of all the main announcements we have currently, and we'll have more at the end of the service today. But if, to, to open our worship service today, I would ask David to word the opening prayer. Shall we pray? Our Lord and Father, we thank you for this time that we can come again together all this, of course, yet another week. We pray for this time that we have together, be it short, but May it glorify you and may it encourage each and every one of us as we remember the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he did for us. And for this time, we ask that it be a blessing to each and every one of us. For this we ask and pray in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, David. <clears throat> in sort of preparation for today, I kind of I've bookended the service with prayers and tried to um, pick songs that complement the sort of spoken parts of the worship. It's slightly more difficult when I don't know what I'm going to say about the Lord's Supper, but the Lord's Supper itself is self-explanatory so that there are songs we can cover. And then again when Michael preaches I have no idea what he's going to say, so I've just picked some songs to hopefully encourage us and um, whatever Michael says they complement nicely hopefully. But, um, the opening him for today is uh, 632, the gospel is for all. So please be upstanding uh, for the singing of this. A one the Lord has made the race, the one has come before. Where sin has gone, the score is grace, the gospel is for all. Oh, 
Our reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, and we are starting that, um, that entire book today. And it's the first 17 verses. <clears throat> and it would appear my iPad has decided that I'm reading from the King James Version, even though I picked a different one. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1. 1 to 17. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, it's concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all the nations for his name, among whom all ye also the Lord, the, the, the all, <clears throat> also the call of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I may mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have an ignorant brethren <clears throat> that oftentimes I proposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among the other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am, already, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God, revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, they shall, the just shall live by faith. <coughs> So that first song that we sang is the only song in the hymn book that actually references this section of Romans. But I felt like this next song also complemented the reading. So if you will, let's sing together hymn 400. I care not today what the world may bring in shadow of sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth over everything and all of my
things that we feel as human. He was tempted just like us. Hebrews 4.15 For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Galatians 4.4 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God, said, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, under the law. <coughs> Philippians, Philippians 2, 5-8 Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now, why am I reading this and what is the point that I'm trying to make? The point that I'm trying to make is Christ came into this world in human form. He could feel pain. He could feel everything that we can feel today as human. And that explains how he felt when his time was approaching. In John chapter 12, verse 27, Christ said, My soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. His time was approaching. His mission was about to be accomplished. But then, because... He was in human form and it was not easy for him to face what was ahead of him. And his soul was troubled. In Luke chapter 22, verses 41 through 44, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood, falling down to the ground. As we are seated here, I want us to imagine what must be going on in the mind of Jesus Christ when his time was approaching. Look at what he passed through. Look at the torture. Imagine the torment that he went through, not because of his own sin, but because of ours. Not for his own salvation, but for ours. He was dead when the time came to save himself. Matthew 27, 42 to 43. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. That, I would say, is adding salt <coughs> to injury. He was already, at that point, being tortured and being dead to do what he actually had the power to do. 
where in the part of Nigeria where I come from, there is a saying that when someone tells you to do what you can do, what you are capable of doing, then you will, you will you are obliged to show that person what you are capable of doing. Because it is natural for a woman to want to respond to that challenge. That you think, you really think I can do this? Then I'll show you what I'm up to. Christ could have called 10,000 angels. He could have called his father to send fire from heaven and consume everyone. But he did not. He endured that shame. He endured that torment. He endured that torture for us to be able to have this access that we have to God this day. He was mocked in verses 28 to 29 of that Matthew 7. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. And they striped him and put a scarlet of robe on him. When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail the King of the Jews. That was mockery at his peak. went through all that because of us. And shortly before he went through this horrible experience, he instituted this feast for us to do in his remembrance. It is a time for sober reflection. It is a time for us to think of the suffering that Christ passed through because of us and to be thankful for the salvation that came to us through that sacrifice. The feast consists of two items, the first being the eleven bread that represents his body that was nailed to the cross. Christ took it, blessed it, and shared with the disciple. We shall do likewise. Let us pray. Our gracious and merciful Father who dwells in heaven, we are thankful for counting us worthy to be among the few who are able to partake of this holy feast. We thank you for the sacrifice that Christ made, for the price that he paid for our salvation, and we are thankful as well because you have counted us worthy to be among those who had taken advantage of that to become your children by believing in you. We lift up this unleavened bread. We pray that you sanctify it. We beg you to sanctify every soul that shall eat of it. As we eat, help us, O Lord, to examine ourselves, that we may not eat to our own condemnation, but that our strength may be renewed and that we may be more determined to remain faithful till the end. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. After the bread, he took the cup and blessed it. Let us pray. Our dear Father and God, we thank you for the unleavened bread that we've just had. We lift up the fruit of the vine before you. We beg you to sanctify it. We beg you to sanctify every soul that shall drink of it as well. 
And as we drink, help us to renew our covenant with you. Help us to be more strengthened, to faithfully serve you to the end of our lives. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It would seem that this is the longest song of the month we've had so far. It's uh, the last thing about two months, it seems. <clears throat> um, but we will be getting a new one next week, so it's coming a little later this month. So, um, But before we invite Michael forward to give us his message from God's Word, please be upstanding as we sing Anyway This Whole. Earthly wealth and fame Thank you. 
acronyms are quite short ones, so don't panic. Um, but we were singing those after Michael's lesson today. Taken from 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2.10. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The Reverend. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you once again for this day and this hour of our worship. As usual, I have four trim lips. It's my prayer that you touch these lips so that every word uttered will impart on the life here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You love some bread, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, they've been better weather, but hopefully it turns out right. Wait, I heard a story about an elderly couple. They started to forget things. They wondered why. So they went to a doctor. They said the doctor and the doctor advised them that. As a matter of fact, they should start recording the things they think they will forget, or their thoughts or actions, or they're going to do something, they should start writing them down. And they agreed to do that. So the next day, A couple were watching TV at night, and the elderly woman said, I sure could do with a bowl of ice cream. And the man said, oh, I'll get it for you. So he stood up as he walked to the kitchen. The woman said, but don't forget what the doctor said. We have to write it down. I'm only going to the kitchen, how can I forget that? A few minutes later, he came with fried eggs and bacon and handed it over to the woman. And she said, I told you you forget. You forgot about my toast. <laughs> Earlier today, I'm privileged to be here to talk to you about the mercy of God. By definition, mercy is um, compassion, sympathy, pity. Now, we are all fallible in as much as we try to do good. We tend to feel bad about ourselves and feel that we don't even deserve a second chance. But then, there is the mercy of God. God will not tell you that a mistake you made was enough to crucify you. That was your last chance. No, he will not do that. In fact, he shows mercy. Not only that, God takes it a step further and tries to rectify the mess that you are in. Some of the mistakes we make in life include bad relationships. We know it's bad, but we enter into it anyway. Bad jobs. We sense that the job is really bad and unhealthy for us, for our families. But we take it anyway. Eventually, we end up crying every day for this because of the bad choice. 
as we get mistreated in those jobs. Bad financial decisions actually cause huge losses to us, and we blame ourselves eternally for that. It's very difficult to come out of it because you know that this is the one that has made me sink this low. But we should understand that God is not man, that he will say, I told you so. It is your mess. Deal with it. No. He shows you compassion. Now today, I'd like us to look at the story of one young man. His name is Jonah. In one Jonah, when you have time, read Jonah, because this is a very beautiful story. So we are told that Job, God instructed him to go to Nineveh and speak his word because they were doing so many bad things and God wanted to rectify that. But Jonah had some bright ideas. He decided to escape from the creator of the universe. How smart. <laughs> now, because he knew how evil the people of Nineveh were. He wanted to go to Tarshish from Joppa on a ship. Now, on the ship to Tarshish, they were threatened by a mighty tempest, which actually kind of threatened to wreck the boat. The Bible says that the storm was so violent that the mariners were afraid of their lives. And they decided, all of them, they decided to call for their various gods that they worshipped. Meanwhile, the culprit was fast asleep. Giving no ears to whatever was happening around him. The captain found him. And he was surprised, how could you be sleeping at this terrible hour. Wake up and call up on your God. Maybe he will have an answer for us. So they ended up casting lots. And the lots fell on Jonah. Now, let's read Jonah 1, Jonah 1, 9 through to 10. Read with me. Jonah 9, 1, 9 through to 10. And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is it that you have done? For the man knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Jonah told them to throw him into the sea, which they did, and the sea did not rage again. Now, eventually a great fish swallowed Jonah up for three days and three nights. Whilst in the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed. He said, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Verses 5, the waters closed in. We're reading from Jonah 2. The waters closed in over to take my life, and the deep surrounded me. Winds were wrapped about my head. Verses 7. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you. Brethren, God had mercy on him. And as soon as he prayed, he finished praying, the fish vomited him out. And he was out of the dying of a ship's belly. Brethren, he disobeyed, but God showed him mercy. He wanted to run away, but God showed him mercy. 
He got what he really deserved for running away from God. People will say he wanted to flee the other way, but he could not around outrun God's mercy. God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Unending, it follows you all along, even if you don't want it. It does follow you. Now in Jonah 3, God called Jonah the second time and told him to rise and go to Nineveh. Now, isn't our God a merciful God? He gave him another chance. For what he was running from, he gave him another chance to fix it. But he was there with him all the way. He never left him. Now he went to Nineveh and the people turned from their evil ways, which is all God wanted all along for the town of Nineveh. Brethren, it shows that although Jonah made a mistake, God's mercy was bigger to the extent that he grants you another chance to reach your destination. Another chance to reach your destination. You might have gone through some poor choices in life. Your marriage being on the rocks, your career problems, deteriorating health, various addictions, your business failures. But here are the facts. You can decide to sit idle and reflect and be depressed about your bad choices, or you can choose to behave like Jonah. Who did realize that salvation and deliverance can only be achieved from the mercy of God, of the Most High God? I do not know the kind of problems you are facing right now. You may be grappling with how best to deal with your present situation. You may think you cannot see a way that he can make you, that can make you happy. You get depressed, go to the doctors, give you some mess, which in fact also has a lot of side effects. But maybe, just maybe, if we continue to have faith in God, there might have been a way to know that even at the rock bottom, when we lift up our hands and pray to him, he will give us the strength to sail through. Although you may not see a way around your situation, God always knows a way around your situation. Shall we read 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians 10, verses 13. 1 Corinthians. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with a temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And that is the reason why we don't have a similar temptations. That is the reason why we don't have similar problems. The problems you are able to deal with, I cannot deal with them. But there's one thing, there's one constant in all this that God is able to support each and every one of us deal with those problems. He is and will forever remain that constant. Brethren, let us understand that God grants us clemency. Just like Jonah, go to him with a contrite heart. As Jonah cried out unto God, he answered him. Jonah believed that God will still bless him in spite of his mistakes, in spite of his poor decisions. When you have the boldness to say to God, I don't deserve it, but it's, I still believe you will show me favor, he will show you favor. God will listen. Understand that the mistakes you have made have not disqualified you from God's mercy. And that your destiny has not been missed because of a detour. You will get that. Because God will be right there with you. 
God is prepared to give you another chance, another chance, and another chance to ensure you reach your destination. You think you might have missed the boat. No, there is another boat coming. There is another one that you cannot see, but God has the full knowledge and he sees them all. It is not too late to become what God intends for you to be. Only if you have the right attitude, honoring God, serving those you need to serve, God will let your destiny come true because God is merciful. Now, I will end with Titus 3 5. Titus 3 5. Now, this is a letter written by Apostle Paul to his co worker Titus. Titus 3 5. And he says, He saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. By the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. As you hear these words, may the Most High God strengthen you, open up your mind, give you the courage to accept your faults. Because by accepting your faults, you acknowledge in them you can do something about it. You can pray to God about it. And I believe that he'll always be there for us and show us mercy. May God wish you bless you. Amen. 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 I didn't know what Michael was going to say, but I think this song does actually do quite good in complimenting what he has to say. If we want God's mercy, we have to humble ourselves and stop trying to think of what we want, but what God wants for us. If you will, please be standing for the, cl the closing two hymns, this one and the one that follows, um, and then the closing prayer. <coughs> Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. 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 And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Wonderful. Wonderful. Jesus is to me, counsel of Prince of Peace, mighty God is He, saving me, keeping me from my sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me, counsel of Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. before you we hope with open hearts to receive you to put aside our selfishness and our our own desires and just to wholly be in your presence today and to long to do your will we're mindful of those who need healing we pray we can be an encouragement to them. We can pray we can show them your goodness in our actions and hopefully they can find comfort and healing in whatever form that takes. We pray we can always be your love in this world. We thank you for those who took part in the service today. We are blessed to have so many capable men in this community. 
In all things we wish we give, we, we pray that we give you the glory and we, we focus solely on the sacrifice of Christ and want just truly awe-inspiring love that was. We thank you for all things. And it's through your Son that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So, a couple of closing announcements. After some um, changes that were made because of various situations out with everybody's control, really, um, Simeon will now be presiding next week, and he will be doing the song of the month situation as well. Emmanuel has the reading, and it looks like Simeon's also on the Lord's table, so it's pretty much a, a Simeon show next week. Um, <laughs> But I'm sure whatever we experience, it will be blessed. Um, Mike and Susan have the cleaning this week. <laughs> Lucky them. And Colin and Helen will be covering the refreshments next week also, um, as they cover for Robert and Karen this week. <clears throat> uh, there really aren't any miscellaneous announcements, really. Uh, remember the food bank. That's kind of a constant one. And um, There's a list in the back that tells you what you need. You know, can bring. The, I noticed today that they're asking for soup, but not tomato soup. So clearly, there's an overabundance of tomato soup. Um, the only other thing really to announce is that there's a, an event being organised by the Cumbernauld Church of Christ, but I believe it's down in Millport. That's where it's been held. It's been held in Millport. It's a ministry league experience. The details of which are on the notice board. And if you wish to sign up, there's also a sheet on the notice board. Um, but if you think you have the capacity to go uh, down to Millport from the August 30th to September 1st, have a look, see what you can do. Um, I'm sure it will be encouraging if anyone can go, but it'll, it's obviously very difficult for people as well. Um, but yeah, thank you all for being here. Have a blessed week. And that's me now. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.